Hello and welcome to Praxis Group International. My name is Mr. Hearn and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, we're going to talk about rhetorical purpose questions. You know, your favorite question, very frustrating, the rhetorical purpose questions. We're going to talk about rhetorical purpose questions, but before I get into that, I just want to say that I'm proud of you and all the hard work you're doing. I know how hard it is for you to get to where you are, how hard it's been you to get to where you are. My wife is from South America. She had to go through everything that you're going through. She did, she got her PhD. She has been a professor in the University of the United States for over 25 years now. So it is possible that whatever you're going through, whatever you have to do to make this happen, it's worth it. So keep up the good work. All right, now, one more thing before I tell you about rhetorical purpose questions is that you may be struggling because you're reading because you're trying to reason out what you read and trying to pick the right answer. I wanna tell you that that method will never work. If you've been with me for a while, if you've seen my other videos, you understand that <clears throat> my students don't read unless they have to, and only as much as they have to, to find a clue in the passage to eliminate wrong choices. We're gonna do something very similar with rhetorical purpose questions. Keep in mind that the test of English as a foreign language, the TOEFL is not a test of English as a foreign language. This is a test of how well you know the rules and structures that ETS uses to create the test. Let's talk about that. Let me show you a few things about this question type that maybe you didn't know. And what we do know can help us to answer these questions faster, easier, and more accurately. Let's take a look. Yes, we're talking about rhetorical purpose, also known as author's purpose questions. You will find between one and four per passage. Keep in mind, if there are more of one type of question, there are fewer of other types of questions because there are only 10 questions per passage. In essence, rhetorical purpose questions ask, why does the author mention this main point? Rhetorical purpose questions are designed to make you read more than you should and try to reason out why the author mentions a certain main topic or to identify the main purpose of a paragraph. To avoid this trap, repeat after me. I don't know and I don't care. Now, wait a minute. You may be saying to yourself, Mr. Why would I say that? I mean, isn't it important that I read and understand what's in the passage? No, it isn't. In fact, the more you think you understand and the more you read, the greater chance ETS has of tricking you. It isn't about what the author means or why they say something. It's all about the rules that they use to make wrong choices. So what we're gonna do is look for information in the passage that is related to the question and use that information to eliminate wrong choices. So we don't care why they mean something. If you wanna know why they're saying something, you're gonna keep reading and reading and reading, trying to figure out why they're saying it, and you won't be able to because the test is designed to just get you stuck into reading and reading and reading and wasting your time and picking a wrong choice. So how do we answer rhetorical purpose questions? Well, let's take a look. The procedures for answering rhetorical purpose questions. Step one, identify the question type. There are several styles of rhetorical purpose questions. Knowing each style will help you to quickly identify the question. All right, so we know that we have to identify the question type. Now, if you've been familiar with the TOEFL IBT, maybe you already know, but if you're just getting started, ETS is trying to trick you every way they can, so it's imperative, very important, that you can identify these questions quickly. The faster you can do a step, the more time you have to answer it correctly and answer more questions on the test. So let me show you a few examples of what rhetorical purpose questions look like. The questions I'm about to show you come directly from the official TOEFL IBT test volume two, third edition by ETS, the people who make the test. Remember, when practicing for your TOEFL IBT, use only genuine 
ETS, TOEFL practice tests. All right, so here we are in one of the practice tests in the book, and we have questions three and four. Both of these are rhetorical purpose questions. And let me show you how to identify them. Common rhetorical purpose questions will often have choices that all begin with the word to, followed by a verb, such as to create, to allow, to provide, to suggest, or they may end in the word to. And all of your choices begin with the related verb, suggest, offer, explain, illustrate. Another thing that you can notice about question number four is that it has a highlighted phrase. I love rhetorical purpose questions with a highlighted phrase because it tells you exactly where to go in the passage and you would read only that sentence with the highlighted word or phrase. Another thing that you'll notice about question four is the words author mentions. That is a dead giveaway that this is a rhetorical purpose question. In fact, many rhetorical purpose questions will say author mentions or author's purpose. Now, let's take a look at some more examples of different types of rhetorical purpose questions. And here we are with question number 18. Again, this is a classic rhetorical purpose question. You can see that the question has the words, author's purpose, and all the choices begin with the word to, followed by a verb. In this case, to compare, to indicate, to explain, to argue. But what about those rhetorical purpose questions that don't end in the word to, or all the choices begin with the word to? Let's take a look at a couple of those. As you can see here with question six, this question does not end in the word to, and none of the choices begin with the word to. But we do have the words author mentions in the question. Keep in mind that we're looking for things that we can identify these questions quickly and easily. Keep in mind that we're trying to save time by identifying questions, by looking at certain features of them to identify them quickly and easily. The faster we can identify something quickly, the greater confidence we have and the more time we have to answer more questions. Now, there's just one more type of rhetorical purpose question that I would like you to see, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, this may seem like a classic rhetorical purpose question because all of the choices do begin with the word to. However, this one is a little different because it asks about the, about the author's primary purpose in the paragraph. Now, I want you to know that I've already said that my students don't read unless they must, and only what they must, to eliminate wrong choices. Now, when it asks about the entire paragraph, some students think they have to read the entire paragraph, which is absolutely not true. Let me get into the next step so you learn how do we answer these questions without reading or without reading very much. Let's take a look. Step two. Rhetorical purpose questions are general questions. All right, so there's two kinds of questions. There's specific questions and general questions. Specific questions are asking about specific details from the passage, whereas general questions are asking about the general idea of a specific sentence that you're being referred to look at. So we wanna make sure we're in the right mindset because if you think the question is specific, there will be choices that match what's in the passage, but they're wrong. Keep in mind that the test isn't hard. It's just tricky. ETS uses everything they can to intimidate you and to confuse you and trick you out of a high score. The procedures prevent you from being tricked. So let's pay attention to what's going on next. Let's look at step number three. Step number three, ask yourself, what is the question asking about? Some rhetorical purpose questions ask about specific sentences in the paragraph, 
Some rhetorical purpose questions ask about a specific sentence in the paragraph, while others ask about the paragraph as a whole. So if the question is asking about something specific from the paragraph, in other words, it'll ask about a specific topic, and it may ask about something about that specific topic, and there are those that ask what the author's purpose is for the paragraph as a whole. Keep in mind that in either case, we are not going to read the entire passage or even a paragraph. We're going to limit how much we read. And if you're not sure how to do that, pay attention to our sentence simplification video and follow the directions so we can read less and understand more. Let's take a look at the next step. Step four, what and how much should you read? Now, this is the most important part about answering any question on the TOEFL IBT reading section. Because if you read too much, there'll be choices that match, but they're wrong. If you'd like to know more about this, I have videos that go into more detail in my online TOEFL video course. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go there and find out more about how you can really learn how to answer these questions quickly, easily, and accurately. But until then, let's get on to number five. Step number five. Read only as much as you need to understand the information directly related to the question. Again, this is not a reading comprehension question. This is not a test of English. This is a test of how well you understand the structure and rules ETS uses to make the test. If you'd like to know more about that, keep watching. Here it comes. For example, if the question has highlighted words or refers to a specific topic in the passage, read only that sentence. However, if the question is referring to the paragraph as a whole, go to each choice and determine if it is related to the general idea of the paragraph. All right, now this can be tricky. And to make this video a little shorter, I'm not gonna tell you exactly how to do that right now, but just know that you don't have to read anything in the paragraph that isn't directly related to the question. You can find out more about that in the video course, but let me tell you the really important part about how to answer these questions, and that is in step number six. Step number six, eliminate all choices that have topics that are either not mentioned in the paragraph or change the meaning of what is stated in the paragraph. All right, so that's it for the procedures and how to answer these questions. If you'd like to see step-by-step -step instructions on how to answer this question, please go to the link in the description below and join me and other professional students in my online video course where you can ask me any TOEFL questions you have and I will be here to answer them for you. That's it for now. I look forward to seeing you.